everybody, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Um, it is binomial distribution time. Um, so we've already dealt with um, probability distributions. We've used probability distributions to find um, to find uh, expected value, and then um, we talked about expected value when it comes to um, we had different uh, outcomes there or different um, yeah outcomes. Um, so with it. What we're going to do today, though, we're going to be dealing with when it comes to our outcomes that are binomial distributions. So I mean bi meaning two. We're going to talk about two outcomes here. All right. So with that being said, again, we're going to do this with an 84 calculator. So let's begin. <laughs> All right. So before we actually go into the work, let's go ahead and remember what these mean, because we're going to be using these when it comes to our work here. Let me add that T there, because with the at least. All right. So here. We're talking about what do these mean? So we say there's at least 60 people. So if I look in the class in a classroom or I look in a in the mall, I say, okay, there's at least 60 people in there. Well, that means there's at least 60, but there could be more. 60 or more people. And inequality that matches with that is x is greater than or equal to 60. If there's no more than 60, number two, if there's no more than 60 people in this mall, that means that it's going to be at least 60, and it's probably going to be less than that, at least 60 or less. And our inequality would be the less than sign, less than or equal to sign, that's just 60. All right, if we say there's fewer than 60 dogs, that means there's less than 60 dogs here, which is the less than sign. Now, one thing that comes to number four, it says exactly um, 60. So exactly 60 means that there's just 60 problems. And as my students said, just 60. I mean, there's just 60 problems there. There's not above 60, there's not below 60, it is just 60. So when we talk about exactly, guys, we're talking about just 60, or just that number. So exactly 20, ex just 20. All right, and then the last one here deals with um, more than 60 tweets. Sorry, more than 60 tweets. So we have more than, that means it's going to be higher than that. Or X is going to be greater than 60. Cool. So all that stuff, again, we've talked about that before. We know what it looks like. We know what's going on. Yeah, just have that. All right, so now that we know those terminologies and remember those and review those, now we need to talk about what is a binomial distribution. Like, what are characteristics that make something a binomial distribution and not a just a probability distribution or some of that sort? These things are going to have have to happen every single time. So, if three of these things don't work, then it's not a probability distribution. If four of them don't work, if two of them don't work, if one of them doesn't work, it is not a binomial distribution. So. The first thing is there has to be only two possible outcomes. For example, success and failure. There has to be two different types of outcomes that come, that happen here. And the thing to think about is expected value. Remember we had like rolling a dice. We rolled the dice there and there was actually like six different outcomes that we had. So with that, um, another one we had like a bag of money and there was like four different outcomes that could happen. When it comes to binomial distribution, it has to be two. All right, the next thing is there are a fixed number of observations or a number of trials that you have going on. So here, let's say that um, you have a test. And so here, talking about this, let's say like maybe 17 questions on that test. So each question is going to be a considered a trial. So there's 17 trials here. You either get it right or get it wrong. Those are your two outcomes, right or wrong. Get the question right, get the question wrong. Okay? Now, all the trials have to be independent. Like, it doesn't, it's not one of those things of, oh, yeah, it's, in, it's dependent here. It depends on that. Like, if this one happens, then the second one, like, will change. No, it has to be, like, it, it's independent from each other. It doesn't rely on each other to do anything. Now, last thing is probability of success for each trial is the same. It must be the same. If they're not the same, it's not binomial distribution. 
All right, so let's take a look at an example here. All right, so our example that needs to happen is to show that we're going to actually have all these characteristics actually satisfied. So with it, our example, we're going to check and see if it really is a binomial distribution. So here's our question. So is flipping a coin 10 times considered a binomial distribution? Is it really? Maybe, maybe not. Mm. But we're going to look at those four characteristics at the top and try to tell, see if it is. So first off, it says there are only two possible outcomes, success and failure, or two, just two outcomes. So if I flip a coin, there's really only two outcomes, right? There's either heads or there's tails. There's always just two outcomes. So here, heads could be considered a success, tails could be failure. Or we can flip it around and say tails is the success and heads are failure. Like, but there's still two outcomes here, just two, dos. Number two says um, there are a fixed number of observations, fixed number of trials that we're doing it. Here it says we're flipping the coin 10 times. So that part is our trials. You're doing something 10 times, so therefore that is your trials here. So, so far we're good. So check, check. One and two is good. Step three says all trials are independent. So looking here, every flip is independent of each other. That is, the result of each flip has nothing to do with the result of the preceding one, the one that comes before that. So yeah. And then the last one, oops, sorry, let me see that. So the probability of success for each trial is the same. So looking at it, every time I flip, let's say I'm trying to find heads. I'm trying to get heads. Um, every time I flip a coin, there's only two outcomes here that will like heads or tails, but only one of them is heads. So one out of two is going to be the probability. And so probability of getting heads is one out of two every single time you um, you do it. Excuse me, guys. Wow. That was a yawn. Woo. Sorry about that. Oh, my. So um, the probability of getting heads is one half every single time you do it. So with all this being said, it is a probability distribution. Woo, woo. So this is a probability distribution. Let me see if I can do this. All right, here we go. So this is a probability. No, sorry, not by probability. Binomial distribution. Yes. So we satisfied all the steps there. Good job. Good job. All right. So before we move into an example here, we're going to go into um, one one last thing that's going to be important for like when we do everything in a TI-84 calculator. All right, so let's move forward. All right, so for a binomial distribution in a TI-84, um, again, it's going to look different than it was in Desmos. So here you will see the binomial um, PDF, and that's NPX here. So the N is going to be your number of trials. P is going to be the probability of success. And X is what you're looking for. So it's the probability of at least this number or at most that number, so on and so forth. Now, another way that you could see it written, and this rant happily happens at times, you could also see it written like this. So you might see that. Just know that it's the same thing as saying probability of the B is just a binomial part. B is just binomial. And then N and P are the same. They might put an X in there. They might not. So it all depends on like what they what you see. Sometimes they might put an X, might not be there. It might just be N and P. And then you have to figure out what your X is from the problem. So, but when it comes to um, our calculator, we're going to be using this part right here. All right. So on the next video, we're going to go to example one and we're going to talk about putting everything in.